You know, the thing that amazed me is um, just after talking to your teammates, the level of respect and love that they have for you. They love playing for you. They love playing with you. What does that mean to you? That means everything to me because I try and be as authentic as I can um, and wear my emotions, what I'm thinking, everything on my sleeve in the building just so we're all on the same page. To where if anything's going wrong, we can get it fixed and everything's going right, then guys can know that just that encouraging spirit to have. Um, that's truly what you want to strive for, being a captain, being a leader, is to have that respect and have that love for your teammates, and it's definitely reciprocated for me. You told me off camera that these are the right group of guys. Why do you believe in these guys so much? We've stayed the course um, from day one, and I can speak personally just based on our offense, coming in with a new system, guys learning that system, a lot of guys with experience, some guys with being brand new, and everybody just embracing having a start from day one from scratch and um, just stay in the course. We didn't reinvent the wheel when we were going through struggles midseason. We just tightened it up, worked on the details, focused on the little things, and said, listen, we can control this. We can take it as far as we want. Now we just have to go do it. You've gone through some sort of adversity, four teams in 20 months. Was there ever a point or a moment that you said, well, maybe you know, I'm losing a little confidence, or maybe this is not right for me? There was definitely times where I lost confidence, where I um, had to take a step back, look in the mirror, and, and think about, you know, am I doing something wrong here? What, what can I do to, to fix some things? And uh, what it came down to is controlling what I can. I wake up each day, be the best teammate I could. And that's what I learned through the journey from the Cleveland to Carolina transition. And then once I got to L.A., it was just about having fun playing football again at that point when I got it. Why was Tampa the right fit for you? I was close with Coach Bulls coming out in the draft, just knew what type of guy he is. Um, and from the very beginning, uh, during even those pre-draft meetings, he said, if we get you here, just be yourself, be the same leader. Um, and they've empowered me to do that since the very beginning. That's what they told me uh, during free agency, and they've allowed me to be myself. Do you feel like everywhere you've been, you've been able to be yourself, or is this just a place that you felt like, I'm able to be who I am? This is definitely the most comfortable I've ever been. and. Part of that comes with the experience and learning the lessons that I've had to go through along the way. And I'm grateful for that because it's, you know, it teaches you how to handle certain things when you go through it. And then you're able to feel comfortable in some uncomfortable situations later on. What was the biggest challenge in replacing a legend like Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, from day one, it's, everybody's going to be talking about it, but I'm not Tom. I understand that Tom's the greatest quarterback of all time, but I don't play like him, um, and we, we carry ourselves a little bit differently, but everybody should do it in their own way, and I think that's the, the best thing about sports and leadership is do it in your own way. When did these guys accept you as their leader? Is, was there a moment in um, time? Was it when they named you captain? Was it before um, that? I think for some guys early on in the spring, some of the guys that I really got to know uh, just during OTAs and mini camp and all that, then training camp once we got to be around everybody, just the, I think the competitive fire once we were really, really with the pads on competing against each other. Um, I think they saw just who I was from the very beginning. You and Jared Goff, both former number one picks. What do you see in his journey that inspires you? He's been through it, you know, obviously uh, from being very, very close to winning a Super Bowl to then now turning Detroit around. I mean, this, this city's on fire right now, and so I, I'm pretty close with him, so I'm happy for him, but uh, he's done a great job. Still want to beat him, huh? Yeah, I still want to beat him, absolutely. <laughs> but he, he's done a great job just staying the course, and um, yeah, I, think, I think those guys feed off him. Now, this atmosphere is going to be absolutely crazy. NBC had the game. We had the game last week. Yeah. Probably the loudest stadium that I've been in all year. What are you doing from an offensive standpoint to prep for all that loud noise? Tell you what, we had the speakers really, really close to the <laughs> offensive huddle, and including the huddle. Because to me, it's once you're at the line of scrimmage, you've already had the play called, but I think it's going to be constantly loud. So just that pre-snap communication, getting everybody on the same page, and um, we're expecting it. So guys just have to handle it the right way. C.J. Gardner-Johnson talking a little trash. Now, do you take that personally or do you just kind of say, okay, I hear him and just kind of laugh it off? Me having little man syndrome, absolutely, I take it a little, <laughs> a little personal. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's a competitive sport, so the back and forth is always fun, but you don't get too caught up in it. Are you worried about um, going across the middle, throwing it, because I know they got in trouble with the low hits. Any concern about that with your guys? Always try and protect my guys, no matter what. Um, but as you know, this is a violent sport, so you try, try and protect them as much as you can, but sometimes unfortunate plays happen. What have you seen from the Lions defense this year? 
Obviously, it starts with 97. The guy's all over the place. Um, I think he, he just doesn't have an off button. He's always going. I, I think he sets the tone for the whole team, and it and also starts with Dan Campbell, just the way their culture is. You can tell their defense plays balls to the wall. I mean, they're always chasing the ball, and, and so they play really, really hard for each other, um, and I think their front allows their secondary to play aggressive. With that aggressiveness or that style of play in the secondary, they also give up a lot of big plays. So I know you've seen the big plays that they've given up. You have to be excited about that as yeah. a quarterback. I mean, we go in week to week. Uh, we feel good about our matchups, and that's not based on anybody else, but it's based on who we have in the room. Um, I mean, our top two guys, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, are so, so consistent and so good at it. And so, um, you know, we're going to see what they want to do, be aggressive. They want to take those guys away. Our younger guys have made a lot of plays for us, and so they know they're going to have to step up in some way or fashion. You guys entered December 4-7. and seven. You won the last six out of seven games. What changed with you guys in that period? We fixed all the little details. Um, we played for each other a little bit harder, but it was, it was all just about doing the fundamental things. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't like we were even at the wheel when it came to our offensive scheme. We just did it better. We started running the ball more. We were more physical, played harder for each other, and we, we saw it, all the work pay off. This is a different Baker Mayfield than I'm used to seeing, <laughs> a more mature Baker Mayfield, and I like you, brother. Thank you for everything. Appreciate that. Man. Good to see you. Good luck to you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.